Okay, so we're not off to a good start here. Buyer beware. And I mean, it's nothing major, but these um, alignment pins, nuts, whatever you want to call them, I've spent a little bit of time sanding these down to make these fit in my ways here. And, uh, or T-slots. And unfortunately, they still do not fit. I mean, these things are extremely tight. After sanding, some of them I still can't get to fit all the way. So, and I thought maybe it's just this milling machine, but it's not. It's also my uh, my Cincinnati uh, horizontal mill too. Believe it or not, I'll show you. Will not go. So I'm gonna have to sand these down or mill them down, I guess. That kind of stinks. Wasn't expecting to do that. I don't understand why. I'm not sure if this is something they do on purpose or not. I wouldn't think so. I kind of expect them just to fit. This vise I bought, that just fit perfectly. So I'm not sure. Unfortunately, this is where the surface grinder I have would come in absolutely perfect. But since that's one of the pieces over there on the floor and uh, the other one's out in the driveway and, well, you get the idea. I'm going to have to get that together before I could use it. So I'm going to put these in this vise, try to line them up as best I can. I, I want to keep these uniform so they fit very well into these T-slots. So I'm going to try to cut them all at once to make sure they're identical or, you know, screw them all up at once, you know, <laughs> probably what's going to happen. Focus. Hold on. Taking some big cuts here. Hang on a second. All right. Even after machining them, they're still not fitting entirely properly. But if you didn't know what these were for, these are guides. Basically, when you put your device in your milling machine, this is supposed to make it fit perfectly tight, and so you don't have to tram it every single time. Uh, that's what these are good for, which is why I'm trying to keep them as tight and accurate as possible. Um, I'm going to fit on these other two and see how they do. This one, this one came out good, so at least we got one down. All right, just a little test to see how we did here. This is my Starrett. No, oh, hang on. I got to shut my flash off. All right, this is my Starrett last word indicator. So we'll take this around. One full revolution. See how it is. All 
Not bad. Just about, I'd say a thou and a half. Well, all in all, I haven't tried cutting on this yet. But I'm going to assume it's, it's going to work out okay. Uh, overall, I've had my issues with this, but I'm, I'm kind of happy. And there's a couple things I'm kind of disappointed about. Um, this chuck is another one, for instance. If I, let me show you what I'm talking about here. Take this out. Turn the flash back on. Now, now it's very stiff, which, you know, fine. i got to break it in. But when you close these jaws, that's it. Let me see if I can get... Oh, there you go. You can see some light through those jaws. It's not... Uh, I expected a little bit better on the grabbing part for what this is. But again, you know, I just did the last word indicator and it's holding pretty well. So I'm not going to know until I really start getting into it and, you know, start needing the accuracy and then I'll find out exactly how it's doing. But I just wanted to give you guys, a, you know, a heads up on how this, this was and, you know, if anybody's out there was looking to get one. Something to uh, consider uh, out of the box. And it it does have some features on it. Like um, it has backlash adjustment, which is nice. I haven't done it. And, you know, I might only because it does seem to have a, a very minute amount of backlash. But I don't know. We'll see. All right, guys. I'll catch you later.